You know I like to start my messages off with something a little bit lighthearted. You should also know that these jokes are very rarely doctrinally correct. And that is most certainly true this morning. But I heard about these three men who died and they all found themselves at the pearly gates of heaven. And St. Peter welcomes them to heaven but tells these three men that since heaven is such a big place that all three of them will be given a vehicle to drive around heaven in and the vehicle that they get will be dependent upon their faithfulness to their spouse. So the very first man who walked up was given a Cadillac to drive around. This, this guy was so faithful to his wife that he ever didn't even, even look at another woman. He, he had his love and he never even glanced at another woman. So he drove off in his Cadillac. The second man, you know, from time to time would look at another woman and would get a little bit lustful in his heart, but he, he never cheated on his wife. He was given a Ford. They thought, okay, that's, that's good enough. The third guy, though, was unfaithful to his spouse, and Peter looked at him, shook his head, and said, since he was unfaithful, he was going to be given a motorcycle. And this guy was disappointed, but he understood it, and there were some consequences to his lifestyle. Well, later that day, this guy is riding around on his motorcycle, and he sees the first man. The man who was given the Cadillac, he was out of his car, sitting on the street, and he was just bawling. Tears were running down his face, and he walked over and he said, what in the world are you crying about? You got a Cadillac to drive around heaven. The man said, I know that, but I just saw my wife. Said, Wasn't that a good thing? He said, yeah, I suppose so, but there's a problem. What is it? She was riding a skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, not doctrinally correct, but hopefully funny. Grace and peace to you from God the Father, and from our Lord, and from our Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Happy Fourth of July. I love Independence Day. I love this country. I think so often we as Americans take for granted. Living in this just amazing country. We're given the right of freedom. We're given the right to carry two to four years to vote for those people that we want, you know, ruling over us. We live in this, this great experiment back in 1776. The world had never really tried something like this before. That we as Americans were able to choose how we want to live our lives. And you read the Bible time and time again, this gift of free will, free choice, is ingrained with how God really wants us to live our lives. Our first lesson that was just read a few minutes ago from the book of Joshua, just to tell you what was going on, that the people, the Israelites, had been freed out of Egypt and spent 40 years wandering around in the desert. God was with them day and night. Remember, he led them by a, a fire in the night, a pillar of fire in the night, and a cloud by day. God provided every single need that they ever wanted. He gave them quail. He gave them manna. He gave them water. But now the time had come for the people to go into their nation, to go into Israel. And Joshua and God tell them, today, this very moment, you will choose. You will choose how you will live your life, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether you live a good life trying to walk in God's ways, however you choose, it's up to you. But this gift, I think it's the greatest gift maybe that God ever gave us outside of the gift of Jesus Christ, this gift of free will goes all the way back to the beginning of time. And we're Adam and Eve in the garden, of Eden, and God puts the tree of knowledge right there in the garden, gives them the choice to either obey God or to disobey God, and Adam and Eve disobey God, just, just like we do so often, but in truth, this is a gift that we really should cherish, this gift of free choice, this gift of free will. But like Adam and Eve, and like those Israelites as they came into the promised land, we know that this gift often leads to us making dumb choices, right? You live life long enough and you see not only ourselves, but other people make just dumb choices. So just to lift up uh, one of the silly things that we do with this gift of free 
year old. Later today, there's a big sporting event. Did you know that? The 4th of July has an annual, I consider a very big sporting event. It's not football, it's not baseball, it is the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Competition. <laughs> Raise your hand if you've ever seen this. So on this stage, there's about 12 men and women, and they are given 10 minutes to eat as many hot dogs as they possibly can. And as you see these men dump their, their, their buns in the water and just gouge down the hot dogs one after another, you can't help but to think, oh, these people are just making dumb decisions. <laughs> Why are they doing this? Well, then the chief leader of making these dumb decisions is a man by the name of Joey Chestnut. And he is the king of eating hot dogs. His record, 10 minutes. Anybody want to throw out a guess how many hot dogs he ate 10 minutes? 64. Good guess, 64. 73 hot dogs. 10 minutes, 73 hot dogs. And look at this guy. You know, he's about my size. You picture a huge guy eating 73 hot dogs. This guy, he's the greatest at what he does. But most people look at what they do and they just think, why in the world would you do it? But not only this, people will go and they will watch these men scarf down these hot dogs. They will be out in the blazing sun, 4th of July, front row, the splash zone where the water's flying on them, the buns are flying on them. You have to wonder why they would ever do this, right? Well, I know somebody who once did this. And it was your pastor. <laughs> that is Pastor Casey, before he was Pastor Casey, all right? So I gained some wisdom. Not really, I'd still love to do it this, this day. <laughs> 2009, I'm in the front row, right? These are primo seats, but there weren't tickets sold, which means I woke Corey up at 5 a.m. <laughs> drive from Philadelphia up to New York City to be in the front row. They gave us these thunder sticks that, that he and Ron, and on the right side, I'm on ESPN. <laughs> Just having the greatest day, greatest 4th of July celebration of my life. I see these hot dogs are flying all over the place. That's the thing about free choice, free will, though. Sometimes you see people do things and you wonder, what are they thinking? What are they doing? And you know, that's just one of the examples. The truth is, this gift that we're given, free will, free choice, comes with a lot of responsibilities. God could just free program us to do the right thing. Anytime we do something that's wrong, he could just zap us. Or he could, you know, blow an air horn or something like that. He could make sure we're on the straight and narrow. But this gift of free choice, the, the, the gift of being able to choose what we want to do as Americans, as Nebraskans, as, as residents here in our community, comes with consequences. Jesus was confronted in our gospel message where some people came up to him and they kind of put him to the test. Where they took this coin, it's called the denarius, it's up there on the screen. And the test was whether or not Jesus would say it was right to use this money. Because a lot of people thought it wasn't right to use this money because the government was bad, the Roman government was bad. And for Jesus to say, go ahead and use this money, in essence, Jesus was saying, the government has a place in your life. Give to Caesar what is Caesar, and give to God what is God's. Now, we as Americans, we're a little bit more complicated than those who lived under Roman law because we are given the right to vote, we're given the right to choose. And like me, you know that sometimes this comes with, with people really butting heads when it comes to politics and coming to, to figure out what is right for our country. And we've really seen this the last you know, five, six, seven, ten years, however long it goes back. But so often we just fight and we argue and we, we want our side to win to the point that we're more interested in, in our side winning than we are you know, 
striving to make this country better, striving to make sure that this country is following in God's way, God's footsteps. People of God, today is the 4th of July. Today is that one great day that hopefully we should remind ourselves that we're not Democrats, we're not Republicans, we're Americans, and we're in this together. And I am so very proud to be an American. I think this, to me, this is the greatest country in the history of humanity. America has done some amazing things. We've got our flaws, but, but God has worked through this great country to help promote peace throughout the world, to help promote democracy throughout the world. Before America, no nation really thought you could actually elect your own leaders, and America is on the forefront helping to spread this idea of allowing people the right to choose, allowing people the right to, to vote, and allowing people to, to go forward as they best see fit for their lives and their families and for their nations. So this 4th of July, may we be reminded through God's word and through our forefathers that we choose every single day, every single moment, we make choices. And we're going to slip up from time to time. Sometimes we're going to make the wrong choices. But today, I urge you, as Americans, as Nebraskans, as followers of God, to choose this day. To be proud Americans, to choose this day, to, to walk in Jesus' footsteps, to make our country a great place to live in, to continue to lift up this country um, as a blessing that